Oh, hello there. I'm just hanging out on the brightest side street Raleigh, North Carolina has to offer here, and I hear these weird, angry crab noises coming from my phone. It seems that the linked list video stirred up a bit of controversy, a little bit of outrage, a little bit of people who still don't understand linked lists. And what's shocking to me is that there are plenty of people that are like, oh, linked lists are slow, oh, linked lists are never appropriate. This is amazing. <clears throat> if a rest station does happen to learn about a linked list, learn what it is, learn what it does, learn how it works, whatever, they'll immediately look for some reason that you can't actually use it. So, linked lists. No, they are not appropriate in a lot of scenarios. Yes, there are a lot of comp sci programs that teach linked lists and that really, really shouldn't be teaching linked lists the way that they do. It gets overused because it's a very simple data structure. It's easy to understand. <clears throat> you have a node with a pointer to another node, and that node has a pointer to another node. It's just a chain. It's a one-way chain of items. And this is what makes it so useful, but it also is what makes it so inappropriate. As many have noted, yes, you can use an array, especially if you know exactly how many things you have, or you're willing to pay the time penalty for reallocating to add more memory to the array so you can add more items to the array. <clears throat> Unfortunately, one of the problems with arrays is what if you need to delete something? Well, now you have to be able to track the deleted state, or you need to move items down in the array, which can involve memory copying the whole stupid thing down to collapse through that one little hole you just made. Or, if you're going through a linked list, you take the item and you keep a previous pointer, or you have a doubly linked list, and you go to the previous item, set its next to the item after the one you're deleting, and then deallocate the item you're deleting. Bam, done, easy, very simple. Unfortunately, there are some disadvantages with linked lists, and unfortunately, if you try to tell a Rust developer that there's this thing, there's this data structure that maybe uh, you don't know how to use in Rust because, you know, you're ignorant, and you say anything about anything that isn't a Rust thing, well, that's not something we use here in these here parts. They go completely ballistic. The crab claws start clacking. It gets really hairy really fast. See, when I make something with a linked list, it's because it's what's appropriate. A linked list can be a very appropriate, especially if you iterate over a list of items sequentially and you need to be able to delete those items very easily. So if I'm writing my duplicate scanner, jdupes, and I'm, say, <clears throat> loading every file that I'm going to process, then I process them. Load, 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 load into a linked list. I don't know how many files there will be, but the problem is kind of alleviated by just having a linked list be whatever until I get to a null next pointer and that's the end of the list. So, and you maintain a tail pointer and a head pointer and the tail pointer lets you add things to the list quickly as you move um, or if you need to add to the end of the list quickly. A head pointer lets you well know where the list starts because you need that. Oh, if you're watching video, you just noticed it got kind of dark around me. <clears throat> yeah, um, earlier... I got distracted by something, and uh, then I had to go. So, here I am, late at night, getting back to the clacking. Anyway, the linked list. <clears throat> you, would, you would have a list of items, say, 10 items, and you load files, get to 10, and then you scan this list of 10 items. And say file number 4, it meets exclusion criteria. You do some early exclusion. For example, <clears throat> let's say that you only want files that are newer than January 2025. And this is from 2022. So you want to remove file four, but you don't just want to remove it. You don't ever want to process it and you just want to free the memory. Like the fastest thing to do is never touch it again, never even look at it again. So because it meets the absolute exclusion criterion of it's too old, you, you're out on four, you've got a previous pointer to three, you've got the next on four, which goes to five. So you take this, link it to this, deallocate everything for this, now you have a list of nine items. Granted, they're not sequential in memory, but 
you didn't have to do any kind of memory copying to get rid of this item. And if you're, especially if you're going to potentially be dealing with a lot of these deallocations, at some point, it's not worth the amount of time it takes to do memory copies to deal with the arrays. Um, <clears throat> basically, you if you have all these holes in an array, like say you have a way to tag something, which means storing more information, by the way, it means storing some kind of, a, say, integer, which expands the size of your data structure that says, hey, this one's unused. Even if you do that, where you just leave holes so you don't have to reallocate an entire array, um, you still, um, the linked list will be faster just because you're not expanding every data structure to include that. Now, if you're lucky, your data structure may include, say, a pointer, um, in this case, you know, directory name, that's never null if there's a directory name. So you can indicate that a slot is unused by setting that pointer to null. The problem is you do still have to, every single item that you touch, you'll have to perform a, hey, is, is this pointer set to null or not comparison, which means a read of that pointer or in any integer, anything. It still means you have to read that data and look at it, run some instructions over it for every item in a list. Now, forget 10. Make it a million. And this is no joke. JDupes, there are people who process billions of files with JDupes. This is not the most common use case, but let's just say, as an example, because it's not unheard of for an enthusiast to have a lot, let's say there's a million files. Okay. And you have an array, you know, do it, do it the rest way or whatever. Um, you, but you have an array, <clears throat> you got two options. You can reallocate to push down, or you can mark things as unused. Those are the easiest ways to deal with, I need to delete something from an array. Um, let's say we see that, the, you know, reallocate takes up a lot of time, but it's a one-time operation for each delete. If you have a lot of deletes, the, just the reallocate, which means copy, 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 it, it will, you'll spend most of your time just copying memory around. But if you mark them as deleted, well, now you've necessitated one million integer checks for every time you iterate through. And then, to make matters worse, see, a lot of people go, oh, linked lists are stupid, use arrays, but then they don't understand that the whole beauty of a linked list is you can completely sever the item from the list, not just leave an empty slot. So, <clears throat> in the name of efficiency... If you have empty items in an array, you either have to scan the array for an empty item to put something in if you want to be memory efficient, or you can throw the memory away and just keep adding at the tail, um, which is memory inefficient, or if you're really, really smart and clever, you'll make some kind of list, a free list, if you will, of array items. Oh, guess what a free list is? It's at a minimum a list of indices into the array. Now you have to maintain this other data structure. Or you could just remove it because it's a linked list and not care. Now, granted, there's different cache performance based on what you do. The whole cache line thing that I discussed, that could be a pretty big problem. I mean, it, <laughs> it could be a very big problem, but it depends on your data. It depends on what you're doing. If you're going to be throwing a lot of random items out of the list and you have no idea what, but you know it could be a big amount, it might make a lot more sense to do a linked list than an array. But this concept blows the minds of Rust people. Because let's just be honest, the vast majority of people who program in Rust are not great programmers. A lot of them aren't even good programmers. And the, said could, the same could be said about any language. <clears throat> almost any language. The truth is, C is an unforgiving bastard to some extent. Um, a lot of the beauty of C is also the horror of C, which is um, the beauty and horror of Unix in general. Unix systems, um, it was said a long time ago that the, um, the rite of passage for a Unix system administrator was accidentally typing rm-rf forward slash and nuking your entire system and having to restore from the backups you may or may not have been successfully doing. <clears throat> and uh, that <laughs> the same sort of brutality is inherent in C. And yes, I can understand why people looking at that going, oh, that's so terrible. Why should we have to cause so much damage to learn something? Well, the thing is, if you're in a playpen and you can't break your, any of your toys, you never learn to be 
gentle with toys. So if you're ever in a situation where maybe you need to take some care, even if it won't break them, something bad might happen, like, I don't know, maybe you find a way to get your toy stuck in the playpen net and, uh, and, it, and you end up clocking your head on it and uh, going to the hospital with a serious concussion. Um, the baby analogies are getting old, but that's kind of the problem with Rust. Rust sort of, it, it, it's like plot armor to these people who think that they're so great. They look at something like a linked list. It's not a Rust, it's not the Rust way. It's the way that C programmers, you know, maybe they do it, and no, it's really just like dumb comp sci kids, you know, who took their first comp sci class, and that's what the first data structure they were taught that's more complicated than a string, and that's why they use it, because they're stupid, and blah, 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 and they don't even try to understand why something like a linked list can be useful. There's this massive hubris that comes from the fact that they think that their, that their playpen protects them from doing stupid things with the toys. It really is just a playpen that's fully caged in, so you can't throw the toys out of the playpen. The problem is you can still throw the toys in the playpen, crack yourself in the head, and end up bleeding from your mouth. That's sort of, um, that's sort of the problem with, say, U-Utils on Ubuntu. I've mentioned this before, too. Wrecking Ubuntu to the point that it can't update, and I know it's like Ubuntu. <laughs> if you really want to correct my pronunciation, and that's your gotcha for the C language sucks, boy oh boy, are you like eight years old and useless. But anyway, Rust programmers have a tendency to think they're better than they are. They have a very severe problem where they tend to have Dunning-Kruger syndrome about their skill level. Now, I, I don't pretend like I'm some sort of amazing motherfucker. I am not amazing, in fact. I am a, uh, I am probably a mediocre to good C programmer. I am nowhere on the level of, like, major kernel developers or the people that work on the C compilers. I am not going to pretend like I am skilled on that level because I am not. Um, what I would say that I am not, however, is a bad programmer. I do make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. But <clears throat> if Rust proves one thing, and one thing only, it's that you can make stupid mistakes regardless of your programming language. And just because your programming language has the word safe thrown around a lot doesn't mean that you can't punch yourself in the face with it. Um, I like the old jokes about how like different languages are different ways of shooting your foot off with a sh with a shotgun. Like C++ gives you a whole cluster of shotguns and you shoot all of them at once in the hopes that it'll somehow hit your foot um, or or just, I don't know. But you, you can look that stuff up. I don't know if search engines will still return such things because, oh, we have to live in a padded cell even though we're adults. Oh, brutality like that is so terrible even though, you know, some of these Mortal Kombat games now are more gory than horror movies. But uh, anyway, I'm getting kind of old because this light here isn't real and it's giving me a false tan, and it's drying out my face, um, which is more than I can say for Rust programmers, because their eyes are beaming bright with hatred for people like me, who are like, hey dude, you know what, don't run around telling me your language is so friggin' great, your language is not great, okay, you've got some stuff, you got some modern toys, like you're driving a newer car, but you have a higher interest rate, okay? You, you're paying more in payments. Um, you know, oh, your car is so safe. But you know what? <clears throat> that guy with the Carolina squat lifted SUV, he's going to kill you the same way he's going to kill me. You think that you're safe because you're using rust. You think it's a, some sort of padded room that you can go psycho in, that you can exhaust your borderline personality disorder in, um, and then maybe pretend like you got something useful done at the end of the day. It's not. There are people who use Rust to write good stuff, and they actually do a good job. I don't know why they would go through so much trouble to give themselves massive ass pain, but that's their choice, and that's not the choice that I would personally make. I think that there are good programmers out there that write code in Rust, but I do not think that there are good Rust programmers. I think that if you consider yourself to just be a Rust programmer, if that's part of your personal identity, you probably are not actually a good programmer at all. Um, likewise, if you consider yourself to be a C programmer, um, you know what? <laughs> Everybody's got their losers, so I'm not going to defend that. The, the bottom line is, my definition of professional is someone who's already made all the mistakes, because the truth is, that's how you learn. And one of the things with Rust is that rather than learning from mistakes in your algorithm, 
you spend most of your time, uh, especially in the beginning, but the vast majority of the time with Rust, you're going to be fighting against the compiler more so than the algorithm. So you've already got to fight the compiler. Now you got to fight your algorithmic choices. And it's easy for Rust people to think, well, I'm not allowed to make stupid choices like linked lists. So I must be better than C because I, I don't have the option to do the wrong thing. That's hubris, man. I'm telling you, CBM Basic version 2, I got my start on the Commodore 64. <clears throat> now, Basic is not fast, but on an 8-bit 1 megahertz chip, it's even slower. But it could do a lot of stuff relatively quickly for those machines at the time and for what you could output. I learned early on, if you do a for loop, and then inside that for loop, you do another for loop. That, if you've got 100 and 100... Guess what? That's 10,000 operations. That's slow. You learn these things, and you make these mistakes, and you move forward. But the problem is there are a lot of Rust people who aren't going to make the mistakes fast enough, who aren't going to run into problems that force them to seriously think enough that they're going to grow. And that's what I see, is that there's just a lot of midwits. There's a lot of people who don't want to grow. And they adopt Rust as an identity. Because even if they're dog shit programmers, guess what? They still can point and go, well, okay, maybe uh, that particular program doesn't quite work the way I want. But guess what? It's safe. It's memory safe. Oh, yes. And 70% of CVEs against C programs are, are memory related. Like, that's saying something amazing. Oh, come on. Anyway. Uh... I'm, I'm about exhausted for this one. I need to go inside because my fake tan's starting to get awful Trumpian. And uh, C is a great language. It is a very, very excellent language. And there were very good people on both sides, as long as they were not crabs. Have a wonderful evening. I'm not sure if I'm Donald Trump or that guy in the old cartoons with the big teeth that's really rich and talks like this. Yes. Good night and thank you. There will be more Rust videos forthcoming. I hope you have enjoyed your time with me on Lifestyles of the Rust and Rusty.